In this lecture, we'll be exploring how uh, focused or basic um, ED echo can uh, fit into peri arrest uh, management in a ALS compliant manner. The key decisions in cardiac arrest are determination of the underlying rhythm uh, from a ECG tracing, exploration of potentially reversible causes and management of those, and then decisions regarding uh, cessation or continuation of resuscitative efforts. In these respects, ECHO can help, but the real question for us is, does it break the chain? As we know, the chain of survival, uh, the timely progression from uh, early recognition of a uh, cardiorespiratory um, collapse through to uh, early in, in, uh, initiation of basic life support, early electrical therapy for shockable rhythms, and uh, appropriate and swift post-resuscitative care has been shown to offer the best chance of survival. So it's important to know whether uh, addition of a, um, of a new uh, treatment modality or treatment tool uh, is going to impinge on, on that chain of survival. The premise underlying the chain is that in adults, most cardiac arrests are secondary to heart disease and that the rhythm will be ventricular fibrillation in the majority of cases. Uh, in this scenario, there's a small window of opportunity for electrical therapy or defibrillation uh, of the heart before there's a deterioration to a non-shockable rhythm, for instance, asystole. However, we do know that not all adult cardiac arrests are due to VF and uh, the underlying rhythm in these cases is either asystole or probably more commonly uh, in the initial phases, uh, pulseless uh, electrical activity. So we do need to think beyond uh, delivery of electricity as the uh, be-all and end-all of resuscitative care. This is the uh, 2010 guidelines from the Australian and New Zealand Resuscitation Councils, uh, taking into account the uh, changes brought in by uh, ILCOR 2010. Uh, it's a much simpler uh, algorithm than has been previously shown, and there's a clear division into non-shockable and shockable rhythms. You'll see on the right, however, a small box consider and correct the four H's and T's. So these are the potentially reversible causes of cardiac arrest that need to be targeted. ECHO can help identify some of these and we'll go through each in turn. There is a possible role for ultrasound of the lungs uh, to identify uh, causes of high hypoxia. Lung ultrasound can detect pneumothorax, it can detect uh, consolidation or hepatization of the, the lung, um, certainly large uh, haemothoraces um, or uh, fluid collections in the hemothorax can be identified on lung ultrasound. However, uh, its role in resuscitative care hasn't been clearly studied and it's certainly beyond the scope of uh, today's course. Hypovolemia um, can be clearly identified using echocardiography, so the focused echo findings of a hypovolemic heart or of a small left ventricular chamber volume uh, or size and a hyperdynamic contraction of the left ventricle. Uh, a nice corollary is uh, presence of IVC collapse as evidence of a uh, poor filling state of the left ventricle. Extension of the ultrasound can determine the source of loss as well. For instance, a positive fast, presence of a AAA or a large amount of fluid within the um, uh, hemithorax. In this example, uh, three separate 
clips on, from left to right showing firstly a collapsed IBC, hypervolemic state, in the middle a hyperdynamic left ventricle, and on the right a fast scan left upper quadrant showing fluid uh, around the spleen. In the instance of hypo and hyperkalemia and other metabolic uh, disorders, there's currently no role for ultrasound. In hypothermia, on the other hand, uh, ultrasound does have an important role to play in confirming the presence of cardiac activity. Uh, this is important in that a cold uh, patient with no signs of life, but echo evidence of a slowly beating heart is potentially salvageable. Uh, this contrasts with the patient who has no cardiac activity on echo, uh, who is probably already dead. Tension pneumothorax can be diagnosed with uh, ultrasound and in the spontaneously breathing or ventilated patient the sensitivity certainly approaches that of CT. Um, however, this is a technique that hasn't been uh, studied and validated in the uh, arrest situation. Cardiac tamponade, of course, can be identified on echocardiography and uh, the identific uh, identification relies on presence of pericardial fluid and uh, echocardiographic signs of tamponade, namely uh, right ventricular and right atrial collapse. This example is uh, a, a scan performed during a 10 second pulse check of a patient in pulseless electrical activity showing a large pericardial effusion and very poor left ventricular uh, contraction. This particular case was a uh, post myocardial free wall rupture. There's no role for ultrasound in uh, determining the presence of toxins. However, pulmonary thrombosis can, uh, echo can look for indirect signs of massive uh, PE. Um, uh, this relies on uh, the premise that only a large PE, uh, greater than 60% of pulmonary outflow being obstructed, will actually cause a cardiac arrest. Um, the echocardiographic signs in massive PE will be a dilated right ventricle. Um, if the ventricular wall is thin, this uh, is highly suggestive of acute core pulmonale. Uh, the presence of a small left ventricle, um, poor inflow into the left side due to uh, right outflow obstruction and you may even see clot at the pulmonary artery bifurcation. The back pressure due to uh, impaired outflow from the right ventricle causes IVC dilatation. So in this four up display one can see a dilated right ventricle. It's uh, the same size if not slightly bigger than the left ventricle in the apical four chamber view and there's an the impression of something flicking in the right atrium. The view at the right top and left bottom is of the uh, pulmonary artery and its bifurcation and shows a mobile clot at the bifurcation. Cardiac thrombosis uh, may be detectable on echo. Um, regional wall motion abnormalities in patients who aren't compromised, so presumably not having a uh, large territory uh, infarct, um, can be subtle and difficult to pick. But in patients who are peri-arrest, um, cardiogenic shock uh, or uh, arrested, uh, we believe that the territory involved will be larger and so easier to see. In these patients, however, arrest is more usual to be in VF. These examples are of uh, patients with different um, uh, regional wall motion abnormalities. From left, a anterior and anteroseptal uh, myocardial infarction. In the middle, uh, infrabasolateral 
uh, infarction. So you can see the septal wall on the parasternal long axis is thickening, whereas the inferior wall is not. And the case at right is a ischemic cardiomyopathy where nothing's really working particularly well. As mentioned, echo also has a role to play in determining when to stop. Uh, some believe that uh, true asystole, uh, uh, as determined by no organised contraction on uh, echo and the presence of no electrical activity, is a fatal uh, rhythm. However, uh, we usually do allow a certain amount of time of resuscitative efforts to see if it's reversible. Um, these patients who have PEA with no cardiac uh, activity, true PEA, have a very, very poor prognosis. Return of spontaneous circulation in uh, approximately 1 in 200, 1 in 300 cases. However, must you must bear in mind uh, or consider hypothermia as uh, that is a, uh, offers a survival advantage. So lastly, we've described the findings for the reversible causes, but can this uh, peri-arrest scanning actually be done in an ALS-compliant manner? Well, luckily it, it has been studied. Uh, Bright Kruitz and his group um, have described a uh, scanning technique where instead of a 10-second pulse check, uh, one, or as well as, one performs a, uh, a transthoracic echo uh, to determine reversible cause. The way it fits in is that after five CPR cycles, an echo is performed during, during the next pulse check to determine uh, what needs to be done next. The way it is done is uh, to perform high quality CPR, so high quality basic life support and uh, advanced life support, um, to prepare your team uh, for the echo, to prepare the ultrasound um, and to test it to make sure that it will actually capture a 10 second uh, loop of information, um, determine the best position for the scanning doctor and probe. This will usually be uh, on the opposite side to compressions with the probe subcostal in order to avoid placing gel over the uh, compression area. You then tell the CPR team to count down 10 seconds and to undertake the pulse check. Give a command to interrupt at the end of a particular cycle for echo. Place the probe in the subcephoid subcostal area. Perform a long axis subcostal echo as quickly as possible um, and press record at the same time to uh, achieve a 10 second uh, recording and at the end of nine seconds give the command to continue CPR. After that uh, the recorded loop can be interpreted and communication given to the CPR team as to the possible uh, findings slide then shows the potential uh, diagnoses or uh, qualitative diagnoses that can uh, result from focused echocardiography. So you may determine that there is uh, normal wall movement and presence of circulation um, or a proven cardiac standstill, myocardial insufficiency, pseudo-PEA or true PEA where the distinction is only made on the basis of direct visualisation of uh, wall motion, um, presence of reversible causes, hypovolemia, suspected PE, pericardial effusion, and occasionally there will be no conclusive finding in the arrested patient. And this most commonly is due to uh, poor uh, imaging or some uh, impediment to obtaining a, a good uh, echo result. So in summary we've seen that a limited echo, uh, a peri-arrest scan, can be performed in an ALS compliant manner 
and can help identify reversible causes of adult uh, cardiorespiratory arrest. Um, ECHO takes the place of pulse checks uh, in an ALS compliant manner, so in other words 10 second echocardiographic looks at the heart.